Okay, welcome to this video in which I'm going to look at how the use of the stylus really unlocks Microsoft Office and specifically the applications that people don't normally think about using a stylus in. And I'm not talking about OneNote now. We all know OneNote works really, really well with the stylus. What I'm talking about now is um, the other four main things that we use within education, Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft Outlook. So I'm gonna give you a really quick look at how you can use the stylus and some examples of what it would look like. So let's start with Word. So on the screen, you can see an example of how I've been able to annotate over the top of an assignment for a student using the stylus. There's two main ways that I've been able to do that. The first is using inking and highlighting over the top of the assignment itself. And the second is using um, ink comments that are over in the right hand margin that's been expanded out the side. Both of these give you a way of interacting with the um, review process for the student or a review document if you're working with a colleague that really you can't possibly do without using a stylus. So I'll quickly show you how to do both. If you just want to annotate over the top of a, a document, you've just got to bring the pen near the screen and a toolbar appears called Ink, toolbar, ink Tools. And when you click on that, you get all of your annotation uh, tools there. You've got colors, highlighters, and all you've got to do is select one of those and then you can now annotate over the top of your document. It's really that simple. The second way is with, through the review pane. And so if I go into the review pane, there's this option here, which is ink comment. And you can see I've got some select text selected down the bottom here. If I now hit the ink comment, now it, that comment will pop in over the right hand side and it's linked to the area that I selected and I can just write um, my comment in here. And you can see then you've got space here and as soon as you click off that and go somewhere else, you can see that the comment, the lines disappear, but the comment stays over the right hand side. So that's how you use annotation within PowerPoint. The next one I want to do is look at Excel. So firstly, here's an example of a graph within Excel and you can see I've produced the graph uh, in class using uh, some normal features of Excel, but I have then drawn all over the top of it as part of the explanation process that I've made with the students. Specifically in this one, we were looking at what the equation actually means for the graph. And I also wanted the students to focus on creating a good title. And you can see here, I hand wrote the title because we spent some time doing that as a class. But you can see, I hope, how the annotations help there. The second example is from a math tutorial that I've done with some students. And you can see here a mix between some data processing occurring within Excel and then some annotations sitting over the top there. And you can see that I've been able to do some hand-drawn box on whisker plots um, in this area here. And that is able, enabled me to teach the students the process of doing the box on whisker plot. And it's a little trick there. You can actually make graph paper in Excel. And you can see the way I've done it here just by changing the column width uh, to the same as the as the row height and that gives you some nice little graph paper in the background just by by changing things around there but again really really simple to do all you do is you bring your stylus near the screen the pink tools menu appears you click on the pens you decide what you want to do this time i'll demonstrate highlighting i've got a green highlighter if i wanted to highlight um, the, the interquartile range here then i could do that um, and you can see that's really that simple the third one I want to show is PowerPoint. Um, PowerPoint was designed obviously for presentation purposes and I find it really, really useful when using a stylus because you can part build presentations and then build the rest of it with the students. Mm -hmm. And there's two ways you can actually leverage a stylus within PowerPoint. The first is in creation mode. So when we're, in what we're seeing right now, and you can start putting things together and hand draw things if you like. And the second is in actual presentation mode itself. So you can see here a couple of examples that I've actually done within classes. Um, here, as you can see, I've got a formula, then an example that I've been able to put through, uh, some stimulus diagrams that I had ready and then was able to go through an explanation of what terminal gravity was, terminal velocity was, sorry. And the explanation is really supported by the use of the stylus. So I'd like to show you how to do both of those. So in 
uh, creation mode. It's the same as in Excel and PowerPoint, as Excel and Word. All you do is you go to the Ink Tools menu and you choose a, a, a pen and you can draw things on the screen um, and away you go. In presentation mode, it's slightly different. Um, so let's just, um, I'll use this slide. Well, if we're just going to presentation mode, now you can see my slide is presenting. There's no obvious way to annotate to start with, but if I go down near the bottom left-hand side of the screen, a menu pops up, and now I can click on any of the options here. I can choose my pen, and I can choose, or a highlighter, and I can choose whatever color was. So if I wanted the, the green color, and now I can annotate over the top of my diagram here and I, I'm just going to make these houses and I don't know why I'm making these houses but I am and um, you can see now that that's that's all done now if I want to finish my presentation I've got now I've got an option whether I want to keep or discard the annotations so now I want to show you what happens uh, when I keep that annotation layer now you'll notice my each of the objects that I drew before I actually, uh, in creation mode, I can select individually and I could do things with those. My annotation layer though is one layer. And you can see if I click any one of those objects, I can delete those and they're all selected all together, even though they're created individually. So it's pretty safe to save your annotation layer when you're actually doing annotations within the presentation. The last thing I wanna show is within Outlook. And I'm going to show two things. The first is um, I actually have found that this is a really good replacement for post-it notes. You can see I've got an appointment here that I've made uh, the day before Christmas. And if I open that up, you'll see inside that it's got a handwritten post-it note inside there. And the thing I really love about this is that this is actually time um, bound. So it's put in within my calendar and then it's synchronized between my phone and my devices. And you can see now that I've got a post-it note that goes with me wherever I want to, and it's all sitting within Outlook. The second example I'll show you, which I'll create live, is just within an email itself and being able to annotate over an email. So you can see here I've got uh, some text I've copied in. It's actually yesterday's blog entry for me. And I'm going to maximize that window just so we can see it all. The first thing is you need to know with um, Outlook is you can't actually annotate into the area, the, the to any of the fields up here. If you want to try and use your pen to do that, the only way to do that is by using the input panel or the touch keyboard. And if you go down here, you can see that there's an option. You can either use the keyboard itself and you could type, or if I choose the, the um, writing icon, I could actually then just hand write uh, my email address. And it's, notice it's actually recognized me. Um, so I can actually just put that in there and I can put a subject line um, in there as well. So I'm just gonna put an example subject line and it will then recognize it, hit the insert button and that's how you do that. Once you actually click into the pane though, which is the main content pane, now the pen toolbar appears. And now it's exactly the same as in um, Office, in any of the other Office softwares. So if I just choose the pen toolbar, I'm gonna to choose the black pen, for example. Because I've already got a lot of text in here, it doesn't give me the lines to start writing. I can just write over the top of anything that I want to. I can just write over everything and I could make comments and those sorts of things. If I create a new message, what I can do now is when I demonstrate this, you'll see that now I get lines at the top as a guide for writing my email. So I could hand write an email and it would actually then come through to the person as handwritten text, which I find is a very, very personal way of doing things. Okay, that's it. Uh, using the stylus within Office, it really unlocks some huge potential, I think. And I hope that you can see that not only is OneNote a fantastic package for using the stylus and a Surface Pro 3, but also off, uh, the rest of the Office suite, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, all have really good potential and things that really make things a lot easier if you're using a stylus. So till next time.